Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the accounting equation to prepare financial statements. So, what I always tell students is that this right here is our accounting equation. A through H are our transactions, and each time you see BAL is the balance in that account. So the cash account has $900 in it, and the supplies account has $550 worth of supplies. The land is valued at cost at $25,000, and so on and so forth. And so, if we were only talking to accountants, we might be able to just share this information, but we are actually going to be communicating this information to a variety of different people with different education backgrounds. So we want to put it into reports that they can easily read and understand. That's why we make financial statements. So we take this information and we summarize it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make three financial statements. The first one is going to be called the income statement. And that is always going to have all of your revenues, less your expenses, and that will always equal your net income. In other words, after you covered all of your expenses, how much did you make? And then the next one that you prepare is a statement of owner's equity. This one is going to involve all those components of owner's equity. You're going to start off with beginning owner's equity, and then you're going to add net income, which is really just the sum of uh, revenue minus expenses, and then you're going to subtract withdrawals, and that is going to get you to your ending owner's equity. And then you're going to do your balance sheet, and that looks just like the accounting equation, which means that it is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So those are going to be the three financial statements that we're going to cover in this lecture. Okay, so let's look. Our revenue is called fees earned. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to make this smaller so that we don't have to scroll around because I think um, it may be a little bit easier. I'm also going to hide this so maybe we can really see everything that we want to see. Okay, so for our income statement, fees earned, we only have one, so we're going to go ahead and come out to the outermost column. If we were going to subtotal them, we would use these columns and put the subtotal of the revenues out here. But we only have one type, so we're going to go ahead and put it right there. Fees earned $7,500. That's my revenue. Then we're going to list out all the expenses because it's important for the users to see what we spent our money on. So um, here we have multiple expenses, so we are going to use that innermost column to add them up. So we start off with wage expense, and that's going to be $21.25. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in as a positive because we know revenues minus expenses equal net income. And then rent expense is $800. And then supplies expense is also $800. Utilities expense is $450. And then miscellaneous expense is 275. So my total expenses, if I sum these together, will be 4450. And then if I say my revenues minus my expenses, 7500 minus 4450 equals 3050. That is my net income for this period. Next, I go to the statement of owner's equity. And it's going to start off with the beginning capital. And this was a brand new company. So he had no net worth in his business to begin with because it was brand new. So we're going to start off with zero. All right, the investments will always be found in the capital account. So during the period, he invested $25,000. Net income will always come from the income statement. That's why we did it first. So I'll put in $3,050. Withdrawals will always come from the drawing. It's $2,000. Right, and then my total change and my owner's equity account will be the sum of that. And then this last line here, Chris Clark Capital, that's a typo right there. is going to be the same this time because we have no beginning um, statement of owner's equity to add to it, but if we did, it would have been the beginning number plus this number. All right, and I will tell you right now, if we had a net loss, 
meaning that our expenses were greater than our revenues, this net income would be called net loss and it would be a minus. All right, and I also need to realize that I need to subtract out my withdrawals because I did not put it in as a minus. So 26050 is our ending capital. I can check that number by looking at my owner's equity section and adding my ending balance together and it's 26050 and that's what I got on this so I know that I'm correct. All right, my balance sheet is going to list out all of my assets and you do have to list them out separately. So my cash is $900, my supplies is $550, my land is $25,000, my liabilities is accounts payable, and after I charged and paid off some, I ended up owing $400, and then the number that I'm going to use for my owner's equity or my capital, those words are interchangeable, is going to be from right here. 26050 would always be your ending capital. That's why you have to do it in this order. So it'll be 26050. And then if I add up my assets, I get 26450. If I add up my liabilities plus my ending owner's equity, I get 26450. So my balance sheet is in balance. And that is how you prepare financial statements and I will do a separate video on the cash flow statement.